everyone, welcome to Kelly's Creative Dream Studios, and this is our final week of playing with the cabinet cards for the May Color Challenge, where we are featuring a yellow, a green, a brick cherry cobbler colored, and a soft pink. And I got a lucky last week, and I found something that I wanted to use. But I'm going to walk you through a couple of things first. I, I've been busy this morning. I leave for a writing retreat tomorrow, so I will be at the hotel when you're seeing this. And I knew I had this picture that I wanted to use with this. But I wanted to bring in the military because I love this layout with this inking over here. Now, while I couldn't do the exact same thing, and I maybe could have if I hadn't stopped stamped directly on here. I you know, could have. But I really liked, I, I needed that. And I told you last week I couldn't find a compass. My sister has the stencil that I would love to have used that Spectrum Art Creations doesn't have any more of. Well, I don't know. I haven't checked the Etsy shop. I may have to do that. But anyway, in digging for something else last week, I found this set from Stamping Up called Sailing Home. It's an older set. And there's a compass. Now, while I couldn't do texture uh, with using the stencil and the cream paste, which was my initial plan, I was just thrilled to find a stamp that had the compass. I also liked uh, You Are My True North. And I'm going to bring in another uh, die cut element here in a minute. Now this one has some other colors back behind it. I matted it on the green. And I'm going to leave it right about here. And then I've stamped Umar My True North on very vanilla, distressed it, and put it on the yellow. And I'll show you how I'm bringing the pink in in just a minute. But I didn't think I wanted anything else behind that photo. Because I wanted the photo to stand on its own. So, um, this is what I wound up doing. So I'm going to come back in. I don't know, maybe it does need something. Maybe it does need something. Something to break that up. So let's see what we have in our goodie bag over here of all of our leftovers. Oh, and I used, to get this edge, I used this edging punch from Stampin' Up. I don't know if it's still available. If it is, I will link it in the description box below. So I used that. And moved my cutter here so I can get into my box. Move my punch because I don't need it yet. Something like that might be behind there might be nice. I'm flipping through my stash over here. That might be pretty. Oh, or maybe this. Maybe this. I'm liking this. Let's cut that out and see what we come up with. We move those pieces and try not to lose them. And let's take, I don't think this is going to be long enough. Oh yeah, well, it'll be long enough. So let's cut this off here and get that out of the way. Oh, and then there's this one. This has the cherry cobbler in it. So let's play with this one and this one and let's let's divide and conquer here let's use a little bit of that red and come back in with a little bit of that blue like that and then this is this is five inches, so let's cut these at about six inches. And we can play with those. So let's cut this one at six. Tad of this and that won't really make any difference. I think it's going to get warm today. I'm starting to sweat over here in this corner. Okay, let's go there. And now we have a couple of pieces to play with. And I'm going to move this before I lose track of it. Because, you know, I know me. And, I don't know, maybe layering that. 
and then bringing this in I think we need to bring this down but I want the red to show I need the red to show so let's do that let's snip because as long as it still peeks out one direction or the other we're good so let's go there let's come up let's come down I think that needs to come over come down there I think I'm liking this if I can get it to move I'm, it's not going to be perfect in place until I glue it so I'm not going to sweat that part but I am going to tuck this edge where I didn't trim that completely off because I want the blue to show. So let's go there. But it really needs, really needs to come down more. And I set my clock up and was going to set my timer and I forgot. So let's hit that. There we go. Now we have a timer to work with. What do you think? Move this up like that. Now, here's the other thing that I have. Where did I lay it? I have something laying here drying, and I've lost it. Ah, it's one of those mornings. I can see it coming. Um, I have a gazillion things I'm trying to get done today before I leave tomorrow. Okay, I have one of these with glue on it, ready to glue. There it is, glue in place. And I was thinking of this down in the corner, and that brings in the pink. Still lets that show, still lets that show. My only challenge is, is not enough of that compass shows. If I put the papers in there so let's get rid of the blue just go with this one like that because that's how much of that compass I want showing and then maybe I just need a breadth of that blue up there that would work that would work so I don't need this as long and I don't need this one as long because it only has to peek up above the photo a little bit, just like that. Come up. Now, let's see what that does when I add this in here. I think it's a little busy, but that could just be me. I think it's a little busy. Let's eliminate, because we have three of the colors. We have the green, the yellow, and the pink. So let's just come back in with the blue. Nope, I don't like that either. I don't like that either. I think I'm going to go with my original plan. Put that in place. And I'm going to use my double-sided tape here. Um, I have started cutting the cards and getting the trims in for the corners, I mean for the spine. And I'm going to come in here like this. And then you know what I think I want to do up there? Let's, we need a little bit of her in there. So let's come in here with this little piece of lace. From out of my scratch scrap jar and this will help accent that very vanilla oh I do like that I do like that so let's bring in our paste that I have open here I need to switch this and put this underneath my clear mat before I have a real mess I'm going to turn this up this way so I can see where I need to put this glue. Let's 
So did everybody have a, a good Memorial Day weekend? As I'm recording this, it is Memorial Day, and Bob and I are each kind of doing our thing. We've spent time with the card decks this morning. We've spent time with the Yahtzee pad this morning. And now I'm getting taking a break and getting some things done. He's out playing in the yard. Oh, and I may have come over too far for that. Let's come back this way. The cool thing about this is this will dry clear. And then I can come back and erase it. Now this I think I want to put on with dimensionals and bring it up a little bit. So let's come in here with our dimensionals. I think I've got some big ones open. I do. When I open some, I put them in a 6x6 six six, uh, card sleeve. And then I'm not getting into my big case. So I'm going to put that there. Put one in the center so we don't have a trampoline. And one on the end. Okay. Um, I've been working on challenge pieces for Spectrum Art Creations and for Kara Brandon Creations. I've been in here and I've been playing and let me tell you, my messy studio shows it. <laughs> my messy studio shows it. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm going to come back in and I took, I had two different flowers. And I put them together and then on this, on the pink one, I took this part out. Used my fabric glue to glue it into place. Just like that. Took two different flowers. And these are inexpensive flowers that I picked up at Dollar Tree years ago. And I've had them in my stash. And then I added um, a vintage pearl from Recollections, which was hot, uh, Michael's, that has been in my stash. And I'm going to use a little bit of that craft glue because it's a little sturdier. And I'm going to put this right down here in the corner. I wanted to bring a little bit of her in. Now, I have one more thing we're going to add. And I have my um, die cut machine handy here. Let me, let me put a couple things away off my desk. Get those out of the way. Get the papers out of the way. I'm wondering. I'm wondering. No. We're, we're not going to mess with it. We're not going to mess with it. Um, but let me move this off the, off the out of the way. I'm going to show you a trick. When you've got a, a brush, if you keep a dry baby wipe handy in your water bottle, this will do a quick cleanup and get the glue out of there. If you don't want to keep actual water on your work table, I know that's something that dear Julie Julie just won't do. It scares her to have water on her work table and I get it if you're prone to knocking things over I don't think I would either but that's an easy fix for keeping water on your desk for quick cleanups that doesn't go over there that goes over there okay now here's what we're doing I have a die here so I'm going to bring over my sidekick and I've got the slip guard mat that my big plate sticks on. This is a jumbo uh, acrylic stamp pad. So that that will section down to just any surface that I want. And then I'm going to come in with a piece of silver. And I have this die from this sailing home set. And go over here in my metallics. And see if I have a silver, velvets, textures, black glitter, pumpkin pie glitter, black foil, galvanized metal. I thought I'd have something here. And I've used it to cut out a chef's knife at some point. So this was from our holiday catalog in 2018. And I don't need all of that. It's not going to fit, so I'm just going to whip that off. And there we go. Now, put that down. Put our ship's wheel down. Crank it through. Okay, I'm going to put this back in the box before I lose it. I know me. Now, there are some other things in here I could have cut out. 
But I thought if we're talking about steering a ship and a compass and true north, this was the piece I needed to use. Okay, and then I have these scrap pieces to go back in my bag. I keep, and I think I've shown this before, in fact I know I have, but I keep all of my 12 by 12 papers in these keepers from Hobby Lobby, and then all my scraps in a standard size page protector, and it just slips right inside with the 12 by 12, but I know I can grab a scrap before I cut into a bigger piece. Okay, now. I need to, where's my pick tool? I need to go through and pick out my little pieces here. And I could have cut this out of wood, or, you know, out of a brown tone, but I wanted something with a little bit of color because we have the brown um, base paper, base pages. And we'll get those out of the way. And then we're going to bring this back in. And I think this would fit right up there. Give us a little balance. If I'd have been paying attention, I might have brought this over a little more. But I was looking at how close their photo is over to the left-hand side. And so that's what I went with without playing with anything. Now, I want to bring this up. And we can distress this a little bit and add a little bit of brown touch to it. Just by... So it looks like those spindles are grubby from dirty hands. You know, not that a guy would have dirty hands, but you know. <laughs> it's a guy thing, I think. Of course, you know, we get inky, so I guess we fit too. And then I have a sheet of, I have a sheet of mini dots here, and I don't know if they're going to fit on there. I think I'm going to have to snip them in half. So I'm going to bring in my Westcott scissors. These are a non-stick. They're Westcott Carbos, and they are from, yeah, Walmart. I want to say Menards. <laughs> from Walmart. And I'm just going to place a couple, three around on those spindles in the centers. Just like that. Have my little cup over here to put all my little pieces in. And let's do one more. Um, those Westcott nonstick scissors from Walmart were not really super expensive. But it beats having to clean your scissors, your regular paper scissors off all the time. Okay, so we got those on there. Now because this is raised up a little bit, I only put... The adhesives on three of these because those are the parts that are primarily going to touch the paper. This raised is going to give me enough of the bump up dimension that I need. So we can go like that. Okay. And there is our page for this. Now, unless I do something later, this is probably one of the except or flip through or I need something to fill. This will probably be one of the last pages that I do. So let me show you what I was working on this morning. Um, with that, I have cut strips of the same um, soft suede cardstock, and I believe this was, and of course my ruler disappeared. How can I have three rulers over here and never be able to find the right one? Okay, so this was an inch wide by seven inch strip, and then I used my scoreboard come in here and I scored it on the 3 8 inch mark right there oh, and it worked better when I was sitting down and paying attention there we go okay so I've got one there at 3 8 of an inch and then what I did give it a little bit of a crease and then I'm coming back in with my glue and I'm going inside the narrower part of that score line. Just like that. 
and then I'll come back and line this up with that score line and it helps me line things up okay now I'm gonna set this one aside to dry because I have one over here that I've done somewhere underneath this pile of papers that I've added to the stack this morning here we go there we go and then this I've gone through and this is what I'm going to use in my spine so I made a template I found the center of I cut a template that was uh, seven inches long Used my centering ruler to find the center so I could line this up and then line up where my holes needed to go so that is done and then that way I can come in here with this line that up and I can make the marks and put those holes in there and that's probably what I'm going to do because I don't trust my trembling fingers to hit the right note so I'll come in here with my pencil and just circle those around and I think I probably should have come out a little farther so I'm going to come out So I'm going to have to pay attention when I do those to move that out a little farther. And I'm going to put my cap on my glue before I forget. I did that the other day and I came in and I thought, Kelly, you know what? Okay. And then these com this comes with, and I don't see my little baggie here, but I have a little baggie that came with them. Here. These are uh, brads with a quarter inch head on them so they won't go through. And then I can pop that open. Well, that didn't come out right. Oh, that's why. Duh. Do you see what I did? <laughs> that didn't come out right. Because I measured for the holes that have to go into the spine. Not for this. So let's line that back up. Some days it doesn't pay to be me. And I want to go here. And here. That's going to fit better, I do believe. Okay. That's where those holes should have gone. So you know what? I'm going to come in here. I'm going to come back and do this one later because I can use my undo. And in fact, if you guys have not seen undo, it is a fabulous product for fixing your boo-boos. Where is my undo? It's relatively expensive, but a lot will go a long way. And this is great if you are taking apart an older album, like the magnetic albums and taking the pictures out and you don't want to destroy the pictures. Or you picked up a dresser at an auction or a flea market that kids have covered in stickers. This will lift that right up. It will neutralize the adhesive on the pictures. And because it's nothing, it's pretty much nothing more than um, similar to... And my sister and I were just talking about it this morning. Um, what you take fingernails off with. You know what I mean, right? I can peel that off. Now this will dry. This will dry completely. You'll never see it. But I'm going to have to let it dry before I put another strip on there. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. It is absolutely going to drive me crazy. Acetone! <laughs> now, I'm not going to be able to glue anything on here till this dries. But it took that off. That will all dry and it won't be noticeable because it evaporates. 
So I'm going to lay that one aside. I'm going to come back in and use this one. <laughs> and I'm going to do the right holes this time. And I think I'm going to trim that down so that I know where I want to line it up on this side. Okay. And then we're going to line this one up. If I go like that, that's what I need to do. Okay, let's move that one up. In fact, let's fold this in half like this. This is the hole we want to use, so I'm going to redo that one. Just like that. There we go. Now, the problem is, is that going to fit? So as I muffle with this and I create a good template, <laughs> I will come back and show you this next Wednesday as we do a flip through. Because I don't want to mess this up. I don't want to mess this up. But I think we're good. That one right there. So yeah, I will make a new template and I'll come back and show you that next week. And I'll have these in the book completed with a flip through of the pages we've done so far. But as you can see, I have created lots of uh, photo spines ready to go in the journal. I have this ready to go. I just need to make the cover and I will bring that in and show you next week um i will be back tomorrow because you know what tomorrow is we kick off a brand new color challenge woohoo so i will see you back here tomorrow when we start featuring jody fi and her real true junk journal journals and we're going to be supporting her all this month so if you thought whether or not you follow jody please go follow her Start watching her videos, and let's support Jody while she's trying to get back on track. And remember to comment on her videos too, please. In the meantime, remember to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Creative blessings.